The Socceroos take on Kuwait tonight in the opening match of the Asian Cup. It's the biggest football tournament ever held in Australia. Someone who will be watching particularly closely is former Socceroo Alan Davidson, whose son Jason is in the squad for the Asian Cup. Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Thank you for coming in on game day. It's a pretty exciting thing for Australia to be hosting. Where do you think the Asian Cup ranks? Oh, it's the biggest tournament ever, the big, big, biggest football tournament ever to come to Australian shores. And, uh, you know, we've got 16 of the top teams in, in Asia and um, we've got a smorgasbord of, you know, international players here. So for all the football lovers, it's going to be a, a great, great month. And Aussie football fans in particular are hoping that results over the last 12 months aren't indicative of what is to come in the Asian Cup. Ange Postacoglu keeps telling us that these games have been a build-up, that this is the real thing now. Where do you think, how do you think we're positioned going into the Asian Cup? I think, you know, um, Ange, from Ange's point of view, you know, he's been trying to identify his players and... Uh, and in fairness to Ange, the, the quality of teams in, those, in that campaign or those last 11 games or whatever, the quality of the teams we've been playing have been a world class. So, you know, um, exciting times ahead and I guess maybe some anxious times ahead as well because, you know, we've been talking and waiting about that, uh, you know, waiting and anticipating the Asian Cup. It's here on our doorstep now. It's ready to go today. So I think, you know, I think just from my point of view and most of the Australian supporters, you know, we keep our fingers crossed and, and you know, We've all got faith in Ange and hopefully um, with a little bit of luck we'll, we'll get our results and we can go a long way in the tournament. We're looking forward to seeing who he actually selects in his starting 11, waiting for news on that today. There's still a number of positions up for grabs, aren't there? Do you think he'll ultimately choose a pretty experienced lineup for this opener? Well, there's not too much experience in the team, really, because it's a youngish team and in, in still in that regard. But, um, you know, I think that I think the most important thing, and, I, you know, I think Ange has made it clear too that it's, it's, it's about the squad, you know what I mean? It's not just one game in the tournament. We've got to go through, you know, three games and hopefully quarters and semis. And so we've got to manage the team properly. And, um, and no one knows, it, knows the team better and, and the shape of the team than Ange. So I think, you know, this, you know, I'd like to say, you know, we've got strong faith in Ange and, and the players and uh, hopefully, um, like I said, tonight we'll get a good result and, uh, and it's open, the opening game is very important but there'll be no easy games for Australia, that's for sure. Uh, absolutely, we're not up against any mugs, that's for sure. Let's have a look more specifically at a few of the positions then. Mila Yadnak in the midfield, who do you yeah. think will join in there? Ah, oh, gee, you know, um, there's... You know, for me, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Bresh, You know, so Bresciano would be would be one in, that would come to mind. And um, he's an experienced head. Yes, you know, um, but at the same time, it's managing Bresh as well. So you know, you've got guys like Longo, um, Terezi, You know, these guys are experienced and uh, and doing well, but. Uh, I, you know, I, I really think it's a, a, you know every position there's backup players, so. Um, you know, we're looking for. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, just seeing the team and looking forward to uh, a great result. Defensively, I'm sure that's an area that you'll be keeping a close eye on. Your son Jason plays in defence. Do you think we'll see him start tonight? Who do you think we'll see at the back for Australia? Um, yeah, I, you know, from a, from a Davidson point of view, it'd be nice to see Jason play, but. Um, you know, Ange is the boss and he picks the team, so I keep my fingers crossed, but, um, you know, Jason hasn't been playing regularly in the EPL, so that might work against him and I can understand that as well, so ah, we have to just wait and see. One of the things we've struggled with over the last 12 months, we scored some beautiful goals at the World Cup, but actually, in terms of quantity of goals, we have struggled. Do you think we'll be able to find the back of the net enough during this tournament to get through to the pointy end? You know, it's a, you know, football's a game of mistakes, you know. Someone's got to make the mistake. And I just think that um, we go into these games maybe as favourites and... Um, you know, there's this, this saying about parking the bus, you know, so I'm not too sure that, you know, if these teams in Q8, they might park the bus in front and drop off and um, catch us on counter-attacks. That might be their game plan, you know, but uh, I think that uh, we've got the quality in the team. We've got, you know, we've got some experienced players and someone like Timmy Cahill is a great leader and Bresh is a great leader and Yannanex is a great leader. And so, you know, and... I think the balance is there. We've just got to make sure, you know, we can talk as much as we want, but really on the day, you know, when they walk out, everyone's got to switch on and perform. It's that simple in this business. Across the board at the World Cup, the Asian teams didn't perform well, and I include us in yes. that too. Do you think this is probably one of the most open Asian Cups in history? I think it is, you know. Um, 
I think really one of the teams that's been pretty pretty consistent and, and still um, I think the winner of the tournament will be the team that beats Japan. So um, I think Iran might be dark horses as well. But um, you know, yes, uh, it's you know from Angie's point of view, you know we're we're in a rebuilding stage. And um, you know the golden generation, you know, is gone, and now we're trying to build the new golden generation, and uh, it takes time. And Angie's in a situation where you know he's he's taken over the team, and he, he's redeveloping the whole team and squad. So keep your fingers crossed again. You know, um, yeah, I think we're in good hands. What about conditions wise? PK tells me I shouldn't be at all surprised that it's wet in Melbourne today. We'll probably <laughs> be wet in Melbourne this evening. Yes. Do you think that does us any harm? I think that'll suit us, you know, suit us, you know, if there's a bit of drizzle and, um, the, you know, the conditions are not as hot as the last few days um, and it appears that way, uh, it's perfect because a lot of these players all play in Europe and they're used to the cold weather, so it, it suits that. And also, you know, all the players in Europe, you know, they play before games, they sprinkle the ground, so a bit of dew or a bit of wet on the ground would be perfect as well.